Welcome, my fellow Virgos. Um, this is your November 2024 reading. This is going to be Virgos for Vir I'm sorry, for Virgo Sun, which I am. So is my boyfriend. Um, he also has a Virgo moon. So this is for Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising. Um, some of you are just intuitively guided. I thank you for paying attention to your intuition, especially Virgo. You know, I often call Virgo my psychic detective. So um, I feel like many of you listen to different readings because you feel drawn to them. And I feel like that's exactly the way it's meant to be. Um, but anyways, we have to put a name, we have to put a title, and we have to put a, de a date, um, you know, just to make it, I don't know, just to get through YouTube's algorithm, I guess. But anyway, so I read through my spirit guides, so I definitely want you to feel comfortable asking your guides to give you signs of confirmation throughout this reading. Sometimes you know that a whole reading is for you. You know, it's going to tell a story, but there can be different avenues. That's where your intuition comes in. That's where your spiritual team comes in. Um, again, just say, give me clarity, whether it be through certain words, numbers, or just a feeling um, that you know it's for you. So you may also be in love with the Virgo. I know I am. Um, not always easy, let's face it, being a Virgo and being in love with the Virgo, you know what I mean? It's like we are a, we, we're a tough, we're a tough um, not to crack. But once you do, I feel like once the Virgo lets you in, then you're in, if that makes sense. So anyways, we are doing opposites again this month. Um something I was intuitively guided to do back in September, and I just love it this way. You know, someone asked me, what's the name of the spread I use? I don't really do spreads. I just do what feels right at the time, but I don't really call them a spread. I just, you know, it's freestyle is the way I do it, I guess. Um, not that I can't do different formula. There are times when I'll use like a certain spread, but normally it's just you know, I go by what I feel. Um, so again, we're doing opposites. I already did Pisces, which is your opposite. And um, boy, there is a lot we can learn from Pisces, let's face it. Um, but there's a lot that Pisces can learn from us also. So that's why I'm doing opposites. I just feel like we really can help fulfill each other. Doesn't mean like in a relationship, maybe. Um, but there are definitely things that we can learn from each other. Uh, I'm also bringing back the major arcanas for November, and we are using these for like bullet points. Uh, I just love using them in a reading, and this is what we're going to start with. So we'll take, you know, a few, hopefully like three to four comes out, but sometimes more than that comes out. I don't refuse them unless it's like the whole deck. Um, so we will start with these. We're also going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. But I'm going to do this at the end of the reading. Um, and just so you know, I've been doing a weekly um, message from Mother Mary. And I have one ready to go for this week, uh, for, you know, Monday. Um, but I also think I'm going to start doing Archangel Raphael too. So you'll see a couple different, like, they're just going to be shorts you know, like a minute or less, maybe a little bit over. Um, but it's just a, a message to help you get through your week. Um, but anyway, so Mother Mary, I have one ready to go. And I'll put it out before, um, as soon as I'm done with your reading. I brought in the Romance Angels. Um, and we will use these if love comes up. But... You are, I think, the seventh reading I'm doing, and love has come up in every one of them. So I plan on using them, but, you know, if love doesn't come up, then we won't use them. And then for your clarifiers, or really to go deeper, one of my favorite decks to use is just, a, I don't know, I just 
kind of love them as clarifiers. I like them um, in a regular spread also, but I do love them as clarifiers or really to go deeper. Um, this is why the readings are long, because we do go deep. We do look for real solutions. And sometimes, you know, I feel like my spirit guides, like, show me where you've been, show me where you're at, and then give me the potential of where you can go. Um, I don't like saying I do predictions here because I feel like you have to consider that people are free will. So, you know, free will can certainly change something, um, can make it better, could make it worse. But anyways, that's why I say, um, what was I just going to say? I was going to say promotions, but not promotions. Um possibilities that's not the word like all of a sudden i forgot the word but but i've already said it uh for your main spread we are going to use the good tarot by the way these are the same decks that i used in pisces reading uh and i'm doing this with all the opposites they're getting their own decks you know each each double sign will have like their own deck so good tarot is what came out for pisces so we'll go ahead and use them all right, so Virgo, I'm just going to calm our mind. Could bring the lid down a little bit. Just do a little bit of deep breathing. <sighs> Clear the energy. And Let's go. All right. So we're going to give them a shuffle or two. Everything's always pre shuffled, by the way. But I do like shuffling with you here. You know, in my mind's eye, you're all just right around me anyway. Okay. Slide these over and let's officially open up the reading. Hmm. We start with the high priestess. This is your intuition. You know, the high priestess, um, I believe, is responsible for the Akashic Records. Like everything you've done, everything that's been done to you, has been written, is written. You know, it's like your book of life. But I feel like with the high priestess, it's like your ability to at least feel certain things. Interesting. I don't know why I'm talking about the Akashic Records. Hmm. We have the world. A new chapter. Um, but, you know, the world chapter to me is... Uh, I hate to say the best chapter. But let's put it this way. In the world chapter, I feel like, first of all, I love the High Priestess next to the world. Because this is you, in, you know, instinctively, intuitively knowing when it's time right when well we have the death card so you know when a door is meant to close when a chapter is just over and it's time for a new chapter begin to begin you know sometimes i want this sometimes it's just kind of mm, i don't i hate to use the word forced upon me um because i don't really feel that because in the world chapter again you're very spiritual you know what I mean? Like, I feel like this is like I've worked up to this energy and it is through my my hardships and the things that I've overcome and everything that I've dealt with. Maybe that's why I was talking about the Akashic Records. But you are feeling very spiritual in that energy. You know, it's like walking hand in hand with your spiritual team. And now you know that. And I feel like when you know that, you can relax more in life, so to speak. But we do have the death card. So, you know, to me, that does signify that a door is closing. But don't forget, in the death card's energy, it's like this is nothing you should fear, right? This ending you shouldn't fear it because it really speaks about a rebirth. 
looking right back at the world. All right, let's see if anything else wants to come out with that. Um, by the way, death card is the card of Scorpio. We have the Hermit. So there is our major arcana. Let's slide this down. Perfect energy to enter also into that world energy. You know, it's interesting because the Hermit's following the world. So I feel like it can talk about like some energy uh, that felt like the dark night of the soul, some difficult experiences. You know, I often feel like in the hermit's energy, sometimes I'm brought down to my knees, you know, but I'm seeking, it's like I have no choice but to seek this wisdom. I don't know. I don't know why I'm picking this up, but I do feel like some of you have dealt with some difficult experiences. Um, but listen, I feel like the hermit ultimately becomes the master teacher. Like from the experiences that I've had and the lessons that I've learned, there's this interest now where I, I just naturally want to help others. You know, um, and Virgo, we're just one of those signs where people just naturally come to us anyway. I do feel like this is um, a wise old soul. Probably has lived life before. Probably doesn't remember that. You know, uh, remember we're born with amnesia. It's interesting how, again, I was talking about the Akashic Records and now the Hermit. We have, well, hello, lovers. Looks like we're bringing out the romance angels. So, first of all, part of Gemini. It's interesting because the Hermit, Carter Virgo, both signs share Mercury. Um, the meaning of this card is ahead of a hard decision. But it's chemistry. And I love that Cupid is like the influencer over these lovers. Many times you'll see like in the devil's energy, it's also the lovers, um, but there, but there's a darker influence over them. Here, this is light. This is the light. And then, hello, judgment. So I almost feel like if this is speaking about love at all, which I feel like that is going to be part of it, you know, no sense of trying to leave it out because I do feel like it's going to be part of it. This is your spiritual team now. So they're calling you to the present moment. Um, you know, it's very much like the death card, right? A closing of a chapter, but then a new chapter opens up. Death or judgment is the same energy. Like it is about a rebirth. Um, and it is connected right to the lovers. And by the way, judgment is blowing its trumpet right towards the lovers i love the judgment is also mirroring the high priestess your intuition so you know you're hearing that call you're hearing that that trumpet blowing and that is your sign you know it makes me feel like the lover's energy lives on the other side of the world's chapter and by the way, in the world's energy, I do feel like the majority of what happens in this, this period normally lasts for the rest of my life. All right. Well, interesting. So people on the board, even though I don't really read these as people. Um, I'm just really looking at the energy of each of them. Uh, so he's Scorpio, Virgo, and Gemini. All right, let's bring in the good churro. And let's take it another level deeper. Again, give it a couple shuffles. Let's give him a cut. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Okay. We have the Moon. 
heart of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. This is your opposite. Interesting because I feel like you also shut up in their reading. Hmm. And then the magician. Um, you know, I don't want to compare the two readings because some of you may be like, I have nothing to do with Pisces. Though, again, I feel like there are things we can learn from Pisces. Um, but I just want to say that you were in their reading, they're in your reading. You both had the magician in the same spot. The manifester. So let's take a second. Let's talk about these for a second. So the Seven of Pentacles to me represents like your tree of life. You know, seeds that you have planted. And certain seeds, you know, I feel like certain seeds we plant before we even came into this lifetime. Um, but again, it's like the adventure of will we, will we find that seed? Will that seed come to harvest? I feel like the answer is yes, especially with the high priestess right above it and moving into a new chapter. So Seven of Pentacles, you know, has a couple different messages. The first message is patience. And that is so that whatever these seeds are, normally you'll see like a tree. And you'll see seeds like all over the tree. And I feel like certain, like I related to an apple tree. You know, certain apples become ripe at different times. So it feels like one of these apples now are becoming ripe. The moon can certainly talk about uncertainties, but it can also be very dreamy type energy. You know, almost like, like, I feel like I'm living a dream. But I have a feeling it came with some hard work, hard experiences. But nonetheless, I do feel that you will be feeling that you're living a dream. And I want to also say the importance of you being proactive in it, right? The magician. Listen, I feel like, again, in the world's chapter, you are walking hand in hand with your spiritual team. It's like you know that they are here to help guide you. Um, but you also know, or if you don't, you do now. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, signs will be sent. Guidance will be sent then it's up to us to take certain action steps. You know, spirit can't do everything for us. So it's coming under the death card, but also the hermit. You know, some of you, it's like maybe you've been on this quest, searching for a certain type of wisdom. Maybe it's spiritual wisdom. And I feel like you found it. I feel like you found it. Um, and I feel like your spiritual team feels like you found it also. Now, you may just be starting down that that chapter, that walk. Um, but again, it's so much easier when I realize that I am being guided. I feel like there's a seed coming to fruition. We have the King of Swords. So, can be a Gemini. It's coming right below Gemini. Can also be an Aquarius um, or a Libra. Let's see what comes beside this king. You know, interesting that the king of swords is coming between or coming underneath the hermit and the lovers who are both ruled by Mercury. And Mercury is about communication. And then you get the king of swords, so it could certainly speak about communication. But showing as a king, I feel like this communication would be good. Like this would be Communication that flows. Um, and, you know, I often think of the King of Swords as someone who, you know, has self-integrity, speaks the truth, 
Now, if he came in reverse, I'd say the opposite, but he's not. By the way, I put all my cards in the upright, so if anything comes in reverse, then I know it was meant to be reversed. All right, but let's see what com that comes on the other side of the king. Some of you yourselves are becoming great communicators. You know, what you have to say to the world feels important. We have justice. Interesting. So, Carta Libra. Um, can certainly talk about cutting your ties. Interesting number 11. We have three ones. I don't know why the ones are like standing out to me right now. We actually have four ones. 11, 11, make a wish. And watch it come true. So, justice. Now... It could signify that there were ties that you cut. And, you know, if you cut these ties, chances are they weren't serving you anyway. Um, now, when I say ties, it could be ties to a person. You know, it can certainly represent, like, the law, divorce. Um, but it doesn't have to be a divorce if it's a person, um, we could have been, you know, truly connected, but yet that connection seems to have kind of frayed out. Um, and remember, when justice shows in the reading, it's really to make you whole again. Even if it means that, like, someone had to go, which isn't always easy. But I feel at this point... Like, you feel like you've grown so much, like on a spiritual level, but also like in your art of communication. And I, I kind of get this feeling like if someone was difficult to communicate with, then chances are I'm not going to keep them in my life too long, especially if it was anything related to love. Keep going. All right. We have the Eight of Swords. Mm. And then we have the Five of Pentacles. Interesting. Eight of Swords. You know, that self-created prison. Um... Interesting, it's coming under the Seven of Pentacles because it literally feels like one of these seeds is coming to fruition. But it's showing you in, let's just say, a fearful state. Eight of Swords is really where I'm building walls around me, trying to protect myself. Some of you could have just been through a bad breakup. Um... Maybe it's even something you didn't ask for. And maybe it's taken some time to, like, overcome, to rebound. You know, but the Eight of Swords, you know, the Eight of Swords to me, because it's mirroring the High Priestess, means I'm not really trusting my intuition. I'm trusting my fear-based mind. And that may be what Justice is part of also. Like, you know, that realization of just the way I'm thinking. You know, think of the law of attraction. You know, whatever vibration I put out there is what must be met. And if you're moving into the world's chapter, well, to me, that's a high vibrational energy. But it may have taken time, and that's life. You know, that's just life, not judgment. That's just life. Um, so, you know, there's a little fear. Uh, something may happen, something may have happened, like, against your control. You know, through the Five of Pentacles energy, it's, it's kind of like someone throwing me a tower. 
you know, it, it can be some type of change that I didn't ask for. But listen, I feel like honestly, in the long run, it's going to serve you. But I feel like you have to look at the Eight of Swords. And, you know, it's it's telling us why the Eight of Swords is created. Because something happened. Because something happened outside of your control. Because it probably wasn't easy. You know, but the thing about the Five of Pentacles, it is temporarily difficult energy. And again, it, it could be something completely out of my control. But I often feel the person in the Five of Pentacles is really starting to move closer and closer to their soulmate tribe. To the people who will get them, will understand them, who will lift you up, who will help build you up. Well, hello, Knight of Cups. Unexpected cup of fulfillment. I feel like I can't stop it. I don't have to accept it. Yet it's coming into the magician, so am I myself, like, putting those intentions out there? It's interesting because there's a lot of heavy energy that sits behind it. And even though this Knight of Cups is coming in, you know, ready or not, I'm coming in. And it is really in an unexpected time. So I could definitely see if this is like, let's say someone in the lovers coming in towards you. And then this Eight of Swords and Five of Pentacles is still here or that energy still exists. And I feel like that's what Justice is really talking about. You know, maybe ties have already been cut. And again, maybe it's not something I even asked for. Maybe it did send me through the dark night of the soul. But I've come out stronger than I've ever been is really what I feel. Um, but I have to realize that. Like, I have to realize that. I also feel like, be careful that you don't judge all love by one particular person. You know what I mean? Like one particular person who, for whatever reason, just couldn't or didn't love you right. Don't think that everyone is like that, especially as you move into this chapter. You know, it makes me feel like you can't really move into the world's chapter until the Eight of Swords is dealt with. And that just means I need to realize instead of trusting my intuition, um, building these walls up and for, you know, what judgment wants to bring in, what the Knight of Cups wants to be bring in, wouldn't it serve me to put these walls down and instead trust my intuition? Because again, I'm being guided, the signs will be sent, but in the Eight of Swords, it's hard to decipher, is that a sign? Is that not a sign? But feel comfortable asking your guides, you know, if you're uncertain about a sign, send it again. But here comes love, baby. Here comes love. And although it's unexpected, that magician, that magician is you. And, um, you know, you don't even have to have anyone in mind. It just may be the type of like the type of person that you're looking for, the type of love that you would want in your life, you know, definitely a higher vibrational energy um, than what you were dealing with. We have the five of wands, the five of fire, and then we have the strength card, card of Leo. It's a card of overcoming. It is a card of looking within. But then I feel like, you know, the strength card can talk about temptations. Like someone, or something that I just kept getting tempted to. Strength cards mirroring. You know, first of all, here's an eight mirroring an eight. And eights to me do stand for new beginnings. But will I allow that? 
you know, I feel like I also have to, in a way, like, give a nod to the universe that I'm ready, that I do want this. Um, it's interesting because the King of Swords, you know, wasn't sure, like, is this someone that I have to worry about? Um, and I'm not just speaking of swords, I'm just speaking of a person. Because below the king now we have the knight, or we have the five of wands. Five of wands is a lot of ego. It's a lot of fighting. Um, you know, it's an energy where really I feel like nobody backs down. And with the strength card right next to it, it may even ask you to look at yourself within that energy. You know, is someone drama filled and they just kept pulling you into their drama? I don't feel like you would enjoy that energy very long. Um, so I feel like justice, you know, sorry, King, but I feel like this is the energy that's probably leaving. Um, but again, to me, this feels like someone has a lot of ego anyway. Maybe communication wasn't that great. Not in the Five of Wands energy. You know, and I don't know why I always pick this up, but I feel like if I'm waiting for someone to, you know, apologize or to say I was wrong or what have you, I don't feel like I get it in that energy. But every time I say that, I feel like, but I don't need it. You know what I mean? Like, if I feel like I need it, then that might be my own ego. Because I feel like on a spiritual level, because this energy does feel over and done with, you don't need them to claim their part. You know what I mean? Like you, you know what you know, what you know, and that's good enough. So I do feel like this is part of what you've been overcoming, um, which brings us back again to that eight of swords. So. Here we have this king, right, who feels like has a lot of drama attached, attached to him, a lot of ego attached to him. Now it makes me feel like his communication skills probably weren't the best. Um, why do I want to let this energy have any effect in my future? Of course, I could have loved this person, but something didn't, you know, something didn't work out. And I feel like the more time I gave him for some reason, I'm saying him, it could be her, but the more time I gave them, I feel like the more, hmm, the more difficult it became. You know, sorry, King, like, I'm always very careful not to, like, um, I don't know what to, um, like, put him down, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, to read their energy, you know, I don't want to, I don't jump on it. I want to, I want the evidence around it. So not loving what I'm seeing. Um, but yet in the same breath, I feel like this, this has probably come to an end and, you know, the end resulted in you building up some walls. Remember it's self, this is a self-created prison. So it can be uncreated. You can, and you have to be the one who uncreates it. And that just means I'm going to let my walls down. I'm going to trust in my intuition. I'm going to trust in my spiritual team to truly guide me. I'm going to remember this wisdom that I've gained from my experiences and therefore not shut myself down. You know? Because if I shut myself down, then I really am comparing, you know, everybody and anything that follows to the past. Well, what if I myself have grown, right? What if my spirituality has really opened up? What if my vibration has lifted? Well, the law of attraction means that, you know, wherever your vibration is at is what must meet you. So keep that in mind, like if I'm in the Eight of Swords, well, I'm kind of telling the universe, 
I'm not ready for any any blessings or you know any signs or any movement. Um, but I feel like your soul is like, but wait a minute. I want some experiences here. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. We have the Emperor. Card of Aries. Three wands underneath that. Okay. Can certainly be a father figure. Um, the Emperor is carrying the energy of optimism with him. Um, you know, the Emperor is normally someone we can look up to. Interesting, the person in the Seven of uh, Pentacles, oh, it's like a little bug flying around me, is looking right back at the Emperor. It's like a little gnat flying around. All right, well, let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. And let's just go ahead and go deeper. And we will bring out the Romance of Angels, but let's start with the Gilded Tarot. Let's give him a cut. And let's start at the beginning, but read it as a whole. So, we opened the reading with the High Priestess. Your intuition. Mirrored by judgment, your spiritual team. And what are they doing? They're calling you to the present moment. Look at this, the Hermit again. Double Virgo. The hangman. Slow down. You move too fast. Hangman is like I'm putting a little bit of a pause on this next chapter. You know, it feels to me like some of you are still going through some difficult energy, but I do feel like if you allow yourself, I do feel like you're going to come out the other side. Look at this, the tower, but it reversed itself. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, some of you, that's exactly why you created up these walls. You know, you dealt with some type of a tower. And that's really what the Five of Pentacles signifies. You know, something happened outside of my control. Um, but I feel like it's also answering a question for you. Because it's coming over the death card. But also the hermit, your major arcana. With the magician. Um, and I feel like the question it's answering is. If I allow myself, let's say, to fall in love again. With whoever it may be. Well, no, I should bring that back. Because, again, if you yourself. If your vibration is lifting. If you yourself are really becoming this spiritual being, you know, you're already a spiritual being having human experiences. But it's like when you understand the power of that, then you don't let like other people stop your blessings from reaching you. Stop these new chapters from opening up. You know, there's nothing wrong with taking a pause, taking some time out. Because that's really what the hangman's doing. The hangman is seeking wisdom, you know. And I, it's clear that the hangman is saying, I, I just don't want to deal with any more towers. But that tower coming in reverse feels like it's saying, oh, there's no tower, my dear. There's no tower that's waiting. You know, I guess our free will could eventually cause it to turn into a tower. But it doesn't feel like, you know, it feels like what your spiritual team is saying is we're trying to give you peace of mind here by letting you understand that, you know, let's just say that love that exists on this next chapter is of a higher vibrational energy. So therefore, 
You don't have to worry about a tower happening again like it did here. You know, you have the hermit who is shining his beacon of light on your intuition. But also coming over the Seven of Pentacles, it's almost like you're starting to feel. Like you're allowing yourself to just feel again. And through just those feelings alone, you do feel like there's change on the horizon. It's good change. But, you know, until you reach a certain point, it's a little hard to trust that. So that's where your spiritual team comes in. Then trust us. You know, if you follow your intuition, we promise you that it won't take you back to hard times. Quite the opposite. I mean, to me, that's what the hangman is seeking. You know, can you give me some type of, you know, I want to say proof. Um, but I feel like your spiritual team can't really give you proof because again, it's, it's, it's really the seeds that you plant. It's really your intention. You know, again, the magician's energy, like you like judgment saying, we're going to send you the signs, but then it's going to be up to you to take action steps. And if I'm simply saying, but I don't want it to result back in a tower, then your team is going to help you so it doesn't it doesn't feel like there's any reason for it we have the three of pentacles we have the seven of pentacles and then hello full so someone's not allowing themselves to have a new beginning Someone is, is stopping themselves from taking a leap of faith. Or maybe it hasn't reached you yet. And that's what it's asking you. You know, to be willing to allow this new beginning. To know that you do have to take a leap of faith. You know, the moon here, I may not be able to, you know, I feel like sometimes it's not about like, where are the ultimate destination? Where is it going to take us? It's about the journey. You know, it's all about the journey. And if this is, you know, if it's speaking of the lovers, then it should be romantic. You know what I mean? It should be fun. You should feel free in it. You know, the fool has put the past in the past. It is not allowing the past to have any say so on the present nor the future. But I get it, I get it, I get it. Because the Seven of Swords coming over justice, Seven of Swords is like the thief in the night. It's deception, envy. Um I feel like for the, I, I don't know if this is for everyone, but I do feel like for a few of you, you could have been dealing with someone who, you know, not only do I feel like they had untrustworthy energy, and it doesn't always mean cheating. It can just be someone who lies a lot, um, but lies so much that I really have a hard time believing anything that comes out of their mouth. So this is what you're cutting ties to, or this is what you have been cutting ties to. And even though... It could have felt sad at the time. Again, I feel like your spiritual team is like, but wait a minute. Look what you had to deal with. So, putting their energy behind you, when you are very real with yourself... Um, and, you know, and I get this feeling also where someone just didn't appreciate you for, like, who you are and, you know, what it is you can bring to the world. It's just like, 
it's like they didn't, I don't know. It's almost like you had to wear a mask, like you couldn't be 100% who you are. And that's not good either. And I feel like I feel like many of you have already dealt with this energy because I feel like that's what the hangman is here for. Like, okay, so this happened. It ended. It didn't end well. I don't want to repeat this type of energy. So I don't mind the hangman like taking whatever time the hangman needs to seek the wisdom. You know, I feel like the hangman seeking spiritual wisdom, but to use on this earthly plane. I feel like it's trust. It's asking you to trust in the wisdom of your experiences, number one. And number two, again, I do feel like there's someone who just didn't appreciate you for who you truly are. Well, that doesn't mean that someone won't. You know, and sometimes people can act that way like make us feel less than because they themselves really feel less than. And, you know, that type of energy doesn't want to be alone. So the fool, will you? Will you let the past be the past? Will you bring down these walls? Trust within us. Trust that we're going to send signs right to your intuition. You know, and I feel like you're able to pick up these signs now. And then, will you allow this new beginning? The full would. The full would definitely take a leap of faith. Because again, remember, the full has the one lesson the fool has learned. And by the way, the greatest mentor to the fool is the magician. And the magician really teaches the fool. And then, you know, the second mentor is the high priestess. So first, the magician teaches the fool that you already possess everything that you need to be successful on this next journey, on this next chapter. And then the high priestess is the second one that the full meets and the high priestess teaches the full that I am your GPS in this lifetime. Trust me, I am your guidance. You know, I'll send you red flags if I'll give you feelings of discomfort if it's something that's not good, but if it's something that's good, I'm going to, you're going to feel it. You know, just like you would feel something that maybe isn't so good. All right. Well, let's keep going. We have justice, but now in reverse. Some of you, that king could certainly be a Libra. Now with... um. The Seven of Swords over Justice. And now Justice in Reverse over the Five of Pentacles. We have the Hierophant. Hmm. Card of Taurus over the Knight of Cups. It's a five. This one asks you to just look at your belief system. Your faith. Do you still believe that all is possible? You know, I feel like the impossible is only impossible until it becomes possible. It's signifying that this Knight of Cups is of the light. Probably someone who's much more in tune with you, also in tune to their own spirituality. Um, I don't know why, but I often feel this is someone of high morals. As I feel you are. But it does want you just a question. You know. Maybe looking back. I can just say. Or I can. Pick up that you know. And listen. I feel like we've all been there. Where we dealt with people who just. You know. Didn't love us right. 
we can't always put the blame on us. We do want to know our part. Sometimes it's just that we stayed at the party too long. You know, it, the one thing with Virgo is I do feel like we do try. Like, we do try. We don't just run away. But, to a point. The world again. And look at this, the strength card over the strength card. Interesting. Double Leo. Interesting. You know, this could signify, because let's not forget, judgment is blowing the trumpet right to the lovers. Right next to the lovers, on the other side, is you. So we know you're part of that energy. What's mirroring the lovers now is the world, which we also have here. You know, and the world here is signifying that a door does need to close. But I feel like, you know, if this is closing a door to someone, then they've given you every reason to close that door. And if you've had a hard time closing that door and it is someone who, again, carried like untrustworthy energy, who didn't treat you well, but maybe you yourself had a hard time ending it. I have a feeling the universe made you feel even more uncomfortable to get you to the point of like saying enough is enough. Why? Why, why would your spiritual team do that? Because there's so many more experiences yet to be had. You know, and I feel like you've been through a lot of lessons. Maybe now it's time for the blessings. And this could signify that both lovers have gone through something. You know, both of them had to um, look deep within themselves. Maybe both of them had just cut ties to someone. So I forget strength cards looking right back over at the full. So... Coming over the Eight of Swords, I'm either going to put those walls down or I'm not. And that's what free will is. You're the only one who can uncreate it. Same if this is another person. Same thing. They have to uncreate any walls that they've put up. All right, let's go right below. You know, I love the Three of Wands or the Three of Pentacles now coming over the world because even though someone in your past may not have appreciated you for exactly who you are, this is stating to me that, let's just say the next person um, is going to appreciate you. You know, it, it's almost like soulmate energy because I feel like each one of us is going to be able to recognize each other's soul and the goodness within each other. You have judgment again. It's like your spiritual team begging you, please allow yourself to jump into the fool's energy. Just take a leap of faith. Whoa. All right, let's take what's faced up first. We have the Empress. Interesting, because now we have the Emperor and the Empress. The Empress is mirroring the world. And by the way, the Empress, in the hangman's energy, um, what we want to remember about the Empress, and by the way, this must mean that walls are coming down. Because the Empress doesn't live with, like, these barriers in front of her. No one trusts her intuition more than the Empress. 
And that's why she receives epiphany after epiphany after epiphany in all areas of her life. You know, the Empress has learned to keep her heart open, to stay who she is, loving and nurturing, um, but also powerful and strong, creative. I love that with the Three of Pentacles also being on the table. You know, something within yourself that uh, maybe you want to bring to the world. Again, there's no reason for you to hide who you are wear a mask of any kind you may have had to in the past or it felt like you had to but here i feel like it's the, uh, the it's the opposite energy we have the king of cups hmm. king of cups coming under the um knight of cups but also the magician the tower in reverse the death card and the hermit. I feel like the King Cups is coming out because your guides are trying to give you um, some comfort as it relates to, because this does feel like love. But I do feel like, you know, I've been saying this a lot, but I feel like, you know, it's that energy of having to kiss a lot of frogs before I find my prince or I find my princess. King Cups is someone who, in the upright, um, is very loving. It's someone who I feel, you know, having that special person by their side, that's life. Like, that's when they feel good. Something happens during their day, you're the first person they call. This person enjoys a relationship. And I love coming next to the emperor. Or the empress, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, we have mm, the queen of pentacles. And then we have the five of cups. All right. So first of all, let's look at the five of cups. Because the strength card's coming. There's two strength cards. And then the Five of Cups comes over. So the Five of Cups, again, a five change, right? In the Five of Cups, this is when I'm really focused on my past, on the emotional cups that have fallen over. Um, you know, the danger of this energy, if I don't eventually change it, is I can get lost in the woe is me. And that is a little bit of what the Eight of Swords is, you know. Again, trying to protect my heart. But here's the thing in the Five of Cups. When this person says, I'm not going to keep focusing on the past. I'm not going to keep focusing on the cups that have fallen over. I'm going to allow, you know, I'm going to allow new in my life, whatever it may consist of. When this person does make that change, there are two cups behind them. They are soulmates. But it does take this change to understand that you know and i and i do feel that sometimes we can even miss like relationships that we know were no good for us but i feel like that's our human nature you know maybe i kept calling something back in and i kept getting the same type of results well i feel like i'm done with that but I do feel like there's a synchronicity here between two people. And the Queen of Pentacles, again, my psychic detective. You know, the world in this spread is saying to you that there is no reason to be anything other than who you are. And being proud of that. You know, I do feel in the Three of Pentacles, it is about other people or another person appreciating you for exactly who you are. Um, some of you, it's about your creative house. You know what I mean? Like some of you, I just feel like you're natural healers anyway. But some of you may decide to create a business out of that or you already have. You know, using your past experiences 
God's your source of wisdom is really what it's about. So, I do feel like you will make that change. And I do feel like you will find the Two of Cups. I feel like that's what the lovers is. I also feel like judgment wouldn't be pointing out the lovers if it was a bad thing or a hard thing. Quite the opposite. I feel like it's going to be dreamy. Um, and it's just about taking a step into it. You know, how will I meet this person? Well, it could be while you're in your own creative house. Could be um, someone who does something very similar to you. You know, I do feel like there is someone who's been through very similar difficult experiences that you've been through. But I do feel like they themselves have overcome. All right, before I move on, I just want to look at the Eight of Swords one more time just to see, like, what can we do to move you past that energy? Well, the Death card. I just got to close it. I just got to end it. I got to put the walls down. I got to allow myself to have a rebirth. You know, this is life. There are going to be different chapters, different pin different pinnacles in your life. And, of course, not all of them are meant to last forever. But I do have to say, when I see the world come out, I do feel like whatever is happening in that energy is going to last forever. You know, can this all still happen? Like, I feel like the Knight of Cups is coming in no matter what. And I feel like your spiritual team is just trying to give you a sense of comfort as it relates to this, you know, this potential love. First of all, I feel like if you're worried that it's going to result in a future tower, I feel like the answer is no. But again, you have to consider your own free will. Like, let's say the Eight of Swords, say all these walls are still up and, and this knight comes in anyway, which is which I feel like is going to happen. But now it's met by all these walls. Will they? And are they willing to, like, work with us to help us bring down those walls? Probably. But, you know, I feel like... I, it's it's almost like it puts a black mark against what's new. But it doesn't mean, you know, both can exist. But I feel like this has to be a pretty strong person to be able to bring down those walls. And again, it's a self-created prison. So really, it is me that's meant to bring down these walls. Sooner or later, I got to trust my intuition. And I just have a feeling that there probably was a red flag at some point during this past relationship. Like, I don't feel like your spiritual team just left you. I feel like they did send you flags. And listen, I know I've been sent red flags and I know I've ignored them and I know I've regretted it. But I've learned from that also. So now it's like I definitely pay attention to the signs really in all areas of my life. Like I trust that my spiritual team is always guiding me. I feel like that's what it's asking you to do. Just trust. Please put your trust in us. Okay. Let's bring out the romance angels. And let's connect this love a little closer. You know, I don't feel like this is just a love reading. Because I feel like what it's also saying is, number one, I feel like you are natural healers. But you can still develop that skill. And I feel like sometimes our past experiences really are our best teachers. 
But this is really learning to appreciate you for who you are. Understand, like, there's no need to give excuses for who you are. You know, and if there's someone who just doesn't see that part of you, then I just don't think they're your person. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, because, again, I feel like this Tower in Reverse is, is trying to give you some comfort in moving forward. Um, and I would also wouldn't be surprised if this person just coming in, because it's coming in, ready or not, <laughs> um, I feel like they're also on this spiritual-led cycle now. You know, they themselves have overcome. They themselves have probably built up these walls. But I feel like their walls are down. Because judgment, again, with the fool over this, this self-created prison, you know, trying to call you to the present moment again, the death card, like, I wanted to look, okay, what do we need to do about that eight of, that eight of swords? And it's just simply signifying that it's got to end, that I've got to find a way to put these walls down. You know, if if I want better in my life, I don't have to do any of this. But if I want, and let's just take love out of the picture for a second. I just want to live in a, you know, I just want to feel better in my own skin. I want to feel confident in what it is I'm doing and what I'm bringing to the world. Um, and I feel like all this is a part of it, like the growth that you've had. You know, I feel like there was a period of time when you didn't realize really how strong you are within. But now I feel like you're learning that. You know, we have the world twice. We have judgment twice. We have the strength card twice. We have the lovers with you right next to him. We have another hermit. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, you know, I feel like the Knight of Cups with the Hierophant over it, 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 to me, it's the light. It's someone who has morals, who's someone who has faith. You know, it doesn't have to mean we have the same religion. It doesn't have to be religion. It's just that we're both spiritual beings at this point. And then the King of Cups, I feel like, is also trying to give you some comfort, saying that if any king was going to show up right now, right here, this is the king I'd want to show up. Because I feel like this is someone who would very easily express their emotions to me. Tell me how they feel. Okay. So... Anyway, I just wanted to look at that Eight of Swords before we moved into the Romance Angels. And I do kind of love that we have the Emperor and the Empress here. Even though the Emperor's on the bottom of the deck, he is connected to the Three of Wands, optimism. optimism. Um, also the Six of Swords, so it makes me feel like this person, the Emperor, has also been through, been through it, whatever it may be. Um, but then has left. So whatever toxicity this person, the emperor has lived through, no longer. And because of that, is now living in a state of optimism. And even, let's go back one more. We have temperance, patience. But patience for divine timing. It, it's kind of like the Knight of Cups, kind of like the Fool's Energy. And, you know, when it's time for this new beginning, again, you are going to be, you're going to be guided. And look at that, the Ten of Swords. So I definitely feel like this person has also dealt with some pretty difficult energy, but it feels like they're coming out the other side now, right? They're in this state of optimism now, believing that all can be true. 
you know, believing that there are ships out there for them. And I feel like you're one of them. I do love the Empress and the Emperor in a love reading. But the, also, they are great. They would be great at collaborating. You know what I mean? And listen, maybe that's even how it starts. Maybe it's some type of collaboration. Um, but yeah, they can definitely feed off each other's energy in a very positive way. All right, let's go up right up to the lovers. It is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. It is safe for you to love. And then separation. Well, I mean, I'm not surprised because I feel like that's why justice is here twice. Time apart, time apart from your partner is on the horizon. But listen, I feel like it's already happened. Um, though I do have to say that for some reason, past lives came to my mind all of a sudden, you know, you could have been together in a, in a previous life and this just may be the time, you know, and I feel like this feels special, like a special type of love, like probably a love that I will at least have the opportunity to spend the rest of my life with. Um, and I already felt like there was soul recognition of each other. And um, what I was going to say is sometimes, you know, this person or we don't come into each other's lives until like we've learned some, our soul has learned its own experiences. You know, the Empress and the Emperor both have lived a lot of life. Um, and it could be different, but kind of the same at the same time. They both are very empathetic and care about their fellow man. And that's why I feel like some of you, I could definitely see you doing, like having some type of a healing business. And they may also. And that may be how you meet or get reacquainted. All right, let's just take a couple more over that, though. Passion. Passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. It's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. You know, that itself is a lesson. That's a lesson we learn in life. So to me, it feels like, okay, that's the lesson you've learned. You know, first of all, that you do deserve the highest form of love. And I feel like, and you're realizing like, okay, I've got to be what it is that I want. Okay. Forgiving and learning. I don't even, I don't know what I was going to take this on. I wasn't really ready for it. But here it is. As you release and heal your past, you experience more love in your present moments. I feel like what this is saying is don't even don't even carry the energy of the past along with you. You know, forgive, I feel like this is part of the lessons here on Earth, learning how to forgive. But it doesn't necessarily mean picking up the phone especially if you dealt with someone who had like a lot of aggressive type energy. 
There's no way I feel like your spiritual team is like, well, you got to pick up the phone and say, I forgive you. It's just forgiving in your heart. It's just saying, I'm not willing to carry this type of energy forward with me. And, and that's really what the foal's asking you to do. You know, the Eight of Swords means, hmm, I haven't quite forgiven, right? I'm still learning. Um, but then once you do, jump into that fool's energy. Okay. So I want to come down here and I want to look at the Knight of Cups, who is the one who is ushering in this love. Okay, first, this could be the one. This could be the one. You've already met the, the romantic partner you seek. Interesting. Now, of course that can be in this lifetime, but I also feel like, listen, I feel like who's ever coming together, I do feel like you have past lifetimes together. You may already know each other in this lifetime. Um, but again, this is unexpected. Let's see what follows it. New love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. This could be the one. Turns into a new love. Hello. Turns into a wedding. To me, to me it signifies that it turns into a true commitment. This moment, this situation involves marriage. Wow. This could be the one. New love. Wedding. Express your love. Go ahead and make that romantic gesture. And then look at this. Someone from your past is returning. Now. Of course, you could, again, already know who this person is. Um, but listen, I feel like if this is anyone I've loved, I don't feel like it's this person up here. Because this person carried untrustworthy energy. This person caused, I feel like, a lot of crap in your life, let's just say. So I don't feel like it's that person. But it could be someone that you've already met in this lifetime. I know that you you I know that you know each other's soul, which means that you probably have had past lives, probably future lives, but it means that you're eternally connected, like soul to soul. And if let's just say I was in a past relationship with whoever this this um this night is bringing in it's still new and that's what the full right is really recognizing right it's it's about whether i know this person or not it's about allowing this to have a new beginning a new start right um and really being open to it all where did it say um Somewhere, or did it say, oh, allow your heart to sing, allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. That tells me that you yourself have evolved. That also tells me that who's ever connected, you know, whoever this Knight of Cups is, is also evolved. That tells me that both um, really are living a spiritual life. Okay, and let's just go one more time. I'm like, do I want to go over here? Or do I want to go over here? I think I want to go on both sides. We have romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. So coming over the full. And that Eight of Swords, let's not forget the Eight of Swords, but the Death card is like, could you please close that door, please? And then look at the other side, True Love. This is a romance of a lifetime. So, 
romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. This is a true life. This is a this is a romance of a lifetime. Even if I already know this person, this is about new, right? This is about two people who have totally evolved. Um, and it doesn't mean that two people who are perfect. I love that the Empress and the Emperor are both here because I feel like empathy is alive. Compassion for the fellow man is alive. Um, both of them, you know, would have their heart open. And because the Empress did come out, I feel like somewhere along the, the road, you did put down these walls. And putting down the walls just simply means that I'm going to trust my intuition instead of, like, blocking all opportunities. There's nothing wrong with taking things at your own pace. And I feel like that's kind of what the hangman's doing. I'm taking it at my own pace. But I feel like the minute, like, the hangman finds that wisdom, then I feel like everything begins. So... It's a true love. It's a new love. But this could be the one. This could be the one. I feel like this is saying just be open to it. Explore it. You know, just go step by step if you need to. But I feel like, you know, the more those walls come down, the more your heart automatically is going to feel that joy, is going to feel that romance. And again, I feel like your spiritual team brought out the tower in reverse so that you could feel more comfortable. Also, forgiving and learning is right there. So to me, it means that whatever towers have happened, they don't hold the power that at one time they did. Why? Because I let go of them. Because I released them. Because I healed my past. And because I've done that, now I'm about to experience more love in my present moment. Well, that has to bring us down to the full. Because this is the present moment. So it's like you're going to feel this energy. I mean, I don't know. I feel like good luck saying no to it. And, you know, how quickly does this happen? Well, you have a lot of energy that's calling you to the present moment. But you still have some past energy that, you know, I just want to say would serve you to deal with it. And part of that is just saying that I'm not going to let past people you know, who just couldn't appreciate me for who I was anyway, I am not going to let them stop me from exploring what else is out there, what is meant to find me, and, and me clearly meant to find them. You know, the lovers simply can be ahead of our decision. And um, it is going to be up to you. But I feel like your spiritual team is trying to give you all the comfort they possibly can so that you can move into this, what feels like a new adventure. But as I say a new adventure, I feel like it has the potential to really last for the rest of your lives. You know, once you know yourself, then there's no need to put walls around you. Once you trust within yourself, trust within your intuition, even trust within your spiritual team, then you know that there's no need to create walls, right? That you will be guided and everything is guiding you. Um, you know, I want to say to like this high vibrational love, but it's also guiding you towards being like you trusting this healing ability that you now carry. So, again, I wouldn't be surprised if 
a few of you, um, and probably more than a few of you, like have some type of spiritually based business or in your everyday work, your spirituality is a big part of it. And I would not be surprised if they are in a similar type of, let's just say, business. You know, and then you have the emperor and the empress, and I feel like this comes together. I could see these two working together, creating together. I, even, let's say we don't work together. I could definitely see, like, us feeding ideas to each other. Like, what do you think about if I do this? And they give you their true, honest opinion. You know what I mean? But but understanding, like, uh, like again, that they know you on a soul level. So it definitely feels like there's growth in that area. But I feel like the, the main thing with this reading, I do feel like is love. It's love. And it could be love that does last the rest of your life. You know, this, you know, we have the mother and the father figure. So this could be, you know, someone who this is the person you're starting your family with. Some of you could be blended families coming together. Don't even worry about that because I feel like if the emperor has kids and you as the empress have kids, it, it's you'll come together in really, I feel like, a beautiful way. Um, but I don't know, like judgment here twice. I feel like it's calling both people to the present moment, the world here twice. This chapter is ready to open, not just for you, but also for this other person. Both of you have probably gone through either a divorce, definitely through at least one serious relationship where I feel like it came to an end. Um, but I, but honestly, I feel like it's a good thing, though I know it probably caused some pain, and that I'm sorry for, but other than that, I feel like it's just getting you ready, well, for a love of a lifetime. This is a romance of a lifetime. All right, let's go ahead and take Mother Mary over the reading. Give a cut. Oh, wow. Hello, marriage. I swear, some of you are going to get married. Like, some of you are going to get married. And, you know, I can't wait for those comments. When I love it when you you tell me you know, like maybe you watch a reading at first and you're like uh, I don't know if any of this could happen but then you say you know what let me go ahead and at least try to put the past behind me let me at least try to be in the fool's energy be open to the potential of what's next and then I feel like and then allow the universe to surprise you. I make a commitment to a healthy relationship with God, myself, and my partner. Going to the chapel and we're going to be married. Going to the chapter. Tenderness. Well, we can all use that. I am both gentle and powerful. That's the Empress's energy. That's the Emperor's energy. Right? But they're still tender, loving, nurturing, but powerful, strong. I feel like there's nothing that the Emperor and the Emperor can, Emperor and the Empress cannot get through. And one of the main reasons is because both of them have really, they have lived a lot of life. And I'm not talking about age-wise. I'm talking about experiences. And both of them have truly grown from these experiences. And I know not all of them were easy. Um, 
and probably most of them were not easy. But this is where you've had your most growth from. You know, this is kind of a little bit like a test. Like, can you, can you remain open? Can you still allow the universe to surprise you? You know, just think back to like love that's been in your life. Did you plan any of it? Probably not. It probably happened out of the blue. But again, that hangman, I feel like it's an important energy here because it's like, you know, I want to say take whatever time you need. But then again, don't get too lost in that energy um, because the hangman's seeking spiritual wisdom. Well, your spiritual team is here over and over again. Now you just have to learn to pay attention to your intuition. And I feel like the rest will just follow. The rest will just follow. You know, your creative house seems to be on fire. Um, what it is you do for a living, other people are paying attention to that. Even looking up to you. And it probably is because of your past experiences. But, you know, as it relates to love readings, many of you heard me say that there's nothing I love seeing more than the emperor and the empress in the same reading as it relates to love. If they're good at if it's both in good energy, it's showing me the emperor is in good energy. Actually, I switched it. Um, optimistic. Also living in the present moment, much like you, as the Empress has the full, he, the Emperor, also is kind of like, has gone through that, that energy because this is someone who is now living in the present moment, who is saying to the universe, I know that my ships will come in. And in the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy this day, enjoy this moment, or do what I can, you know, to create, um, just be myself. So, I simply feel like the rest will follow. I feel like Virgo, again, it depends where you're at in this reading. Um... And, you know, this is not like an overnight type of thing because there are energies that we needed to not just go through, but also to understand them and also to clear them. So however long that takes is however long that takes. But I feel like once you do jump into the fool's energy, you know, I feel like this Knight of Cups, again, this unexpected cup of, let's just call it love. I feel like it's coming no matter what whether I have those walls up or I have the walls down. But because the emperor showed after the fact, I know the empress doesn't live with walls. She just doesn't. She trusts her intuition more than anyone. So, my advice is just go with the flow and see where it takes you. You know, and just think about it. The more that you can, like, forgive and let the past go, and the more you just allow yourself, you know, to be playful, to make romantic gestures, to just, you know, express yourself, just be kid-like, um, the more I feel like this is going to surprise you. And I do feel like, ultimately, it is moving into a real true commitment some of you this is who you're going to call your husband or this is who you're going to call your wife and i think i'm going to let that be um i feel like there's so much energy where no one can really control certain next steps that you take but you but once you're willing and able to take those next steps, I feel like everything, everything just starts moving for you. That's why judgment is mirroring the high priestess. That's probably the most important energy here right now. Because again, being guided towards what? Well, 
towards living your best life, but also towards a love. And it is true love. And it is true commitment. What more can I say? I'm just going to let that be. Um, I love you guys. Truly. You know, it's interesting because I really don't try to make these love readings. But love does always want to seem to come out. You know, but this is talking about life too. And how we handle certain situations. You know, and what we're willing to let go of. And what we're unwilling to let go of. And really, I feel like it's like a roadmap of how you can live your best life. But. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I love you guys. Bye. Thank you, as always. I can't wait to read future comments where you're going to say to me, man, you're right. I did allow myself to have this new beginning and I did meet someone. And I feel like this person is for the rest of my life. I know those comments will come in time. So I can't wait. To, it's like I can't wait to read your future comments. Though I'm also interested in your current comments. Where are you in this reading? Um, some of you have already, you know, jumped into the fool's energy. Some of you have already met this Knight of Cups, you know. And I feel like... Virgo's wisdom is, how do I want to say this? Like, like, I feel like part of our reason to be on this earth is really to share our wisdom. You know, I feel like we have a different perspective upon it um, where we really can help others, but it is important to help oneself first. So becoming both gentle and powerful. It's a winning combination. All right, guys. I know I keep saying I'm going to stop talking. Now I really am. I love you. I thank you. And I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye. By the way, the Steelers are on today. Those Steelers. Love you guys. Bye-bye.